What really does happen when a person dies? Hi, this is Keith Slough from Ambassador Christian College. You know, the average person just makes an assumption. They hear the preacher say, well, brother so-and-so is in heaven. He's more alive today than ever before. You ever heard that? He's more alive now than he's ever been, and he's cognitive, and he knows everything, and he's smart. Oh, and he's looking down at you right now. You ever, you ever heard that expression used? Now, those may be comforting thoughts. I don't know. For some people, they may be very comforting thoughts. But here's the problem I have with that. And I was just a little kid, and, and I had an uncle to die. And, you know, you heard people say, well, he's looking down at you right now. And I got in the shower or the bathtub or whatever it was. And I'm thinking, whoa, 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 is he looking down on me right now? now? You have to think about that. Is somebody who has died, are they looking down on you right now at this very moment while we're sitting here talking? You're listening, and I'm talking to you on the radio. Are they looking at you? You know, uh, I teach at Ambassador Christian College, and one year we had a, a rather young widow who was in the class. And uh, when we were going over this subject, uh, and I've got an article here I'd like to send you that I, I give to our students here. It's called, What Happens After Death? And it asks the question about heaven, paradise, Hades, limbo, purgatory, what about nirvana, what about reincarnation, transmigration, and so on. And so I said, now think about this. Let's assume that uh, a, a person has, uh, they've lost their husband or wife. Well, that perked up her ears. I said, and then they decide to get remarried. And so uh, so you meet this next person and, and uh, a lady, let's say a widow marries this guy and on their wedding night, is her first husband looking down at her? Now, you know, I don't know whether you think that's um, uh, a little weird or not, but I think it's just a little bit weird. Do people in heaven look down on their loved ones? Can they do that? What does the Bible say about that? Do you know the Bible has an answer for that? It does. Now, I have proven over the years that the Bible is the inspired word of Almighty God. I have. I've proved that. And, uh, and I've done it on radio and on television. I've done it in the pulpit. I've done it in the classroom. There, there is a way to prove that the Bible is actually metaphysically written, supernaturally inspired. It's not just my belief or my faith or something that my mother or grandmother taught me. It's something I have proved for myself. The Bible is the Word of God. And so we have revelation then from Almighty God. After all, God knows Jesus died and now he's alive again. He's the one to tell us. And in the Bible, we find out what happens when a person dies. And it's not what a lot of you think. You know, it sounds nice that so-and-so is up there right now walking the streets of gold. And he's having a wonderful time. And he's meeting Uncle Louie and, and, and Aunt Lucy and, and all the, the relatives who have died before. And all that doesn't sound good. But you know what the Apostle Paul said in the New Testament? First Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in verse 13, he says, I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren. And so many people today are ignorant. He said about those who have, who have died, or those who are asleep in Jesus. For when Jesus returns, it says the dead will rise first, and then we who are alive will then be caught up. The Latin word is raptured to meet them in the clouds of heaven, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. What does he say about the dead? If people would just believe what the Bible says, a lot of these ideas and uh, assumptions that people have, the suppositions that we make, it just wouldn't be there. Because you see, if uh, if Uncle Fred went to heaven and he's in heaven having a wonderful time right now, um, having a good time, well, what about Uncle Louie uh, who maybe didn't make it? Um, where is he right now? Uh-huh. Because I had an uncle that died and everybody knew he wasn't a Christian. Fine man, nice guy, good husband, good father, a wonderful uh a neighbor, and so on. Good man, but he never saw a need to go to church, never saw a need for religion, as he would have put it, and he never made a confession of Jesus Christ. Well, where is he right now? That was an interesting funeral to go to. That was the one funeral that I have attended where the preacher knew better than to preach him into heaven. But is he right now burning in hell? Now, that's what a lot of people think based on the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. That's what a lot of people think. But is that actually what the Bible says? These are questions we need to look at. 
We do examine them. Now, let me tell you real quickly, I am a Christian. I do believe in Jesus Christ. I do believe that the Bible is truly his word. And in John 17, 17, Jesus said, God's word is truth, not the ideas of men. I had a Sunday school teacher when I was, I don't know, probably 9 or 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there. And she believed that she came back as ghosts. And she gave us a reason for that because they had a ghost in their home, that some little girl that had died in a car accident or out in the street or somehow, and, and, and that little girl was seen by her children, and she said, oh, well, her ghost is in the house, and how nice it is to have a ghost in the house. So the little girl didn't go to heaven. But now when they went to the little girl's funeral, you can bet the preacher said, oh, she's right now up there in heaven. Well, do people in heaven get to come back and haunt your house? And play tricks on you and things like that? Or are those ghosts actually demons? So yes, I do believe that what the Bible says. My question is, I'm not questioning the Bible. No, 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 no. Don't, don't misunderstand. I'm, I'm not questioning the Bible. I'm questioning what people say, what they assume happens when a person dies. And is it the same thing as what the Bible actually teaches? The Bible, the Holy Bible, is the Word of God, and God does not lie, and He knows what happens when you die. He knows. Jesus knows what happens when you die. And does He say that you come back as a ghost? Now, I had a, a, a friend, a very fine Christian man, who believed you, you and he was a Christian now, he, he believed in Jesus. And he also believed in reincarnation. And he told me, you know, you may have been reincarnated several times and, and uh, all these things, you know, and, and I'm sitting there listening to him politely. So some Christians believe you come back as ghosts. Some Christians believe you're reincarnation. I don't know that there are any Christians that believe in transmigration, which means you come back as a cow or something like that. Now, I want to tell you something. If you would like to get this article, and all it does, it doesn't explore like I'm doing on this program. It does not explore all the ideas and the suppositions and myths and superstitions of men. It doesn't do that. But it does go into what the Word of God actually does say. It quotes 1 Thessalonians 4.16, that, that when Jesus returns, those who are asleep in Jesus will be raised from the dead. That's what the Bible says. Of course, the average person Nowadays, doesn't want to believe that. Let me, let me give you an idea, something you can do. Go out to an old cemetery. Most of you have been in these old church cemeteries at one time or another. Go find an old church cemetery where they, uh, a lot of them died in the late 1700s, early 1800s, or even all the way up to about 1900. You'll see on their tombstones words like this, asleep in Jesus, or waiting for his coming, or something to, to that effect. You don't see that much on tombstones nowadays, but you had it on those those uh, those stones way back in, uh, over a hundred years ago, because most people then just they they just took the Bible for what it said. Now, what does the Bible teach? Happens, First Corinthians chapter fifteen, beginning in verse fifty, it says, "Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God." So we've got to get our resurrected glorified body before we'll ever walk those streets of gold. Did you know that? The Bible talks about the heavenly city and how that God is going to bring that city. God the Father is bringing that city back here to this earth at the end of the thousand-year millennial reign of Christ. And so one day you'll have the opportunity to see that city and walk in that city and see those beautiful streets paved with gold. Yes, that's if you're a Christian, yes, that's true. But when does that happen? Are dead people up there right now walking the streets of gold? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the apostle Paul wrote to the Greek Christians there in Greece, in Corinth, in the city of Corinth. He said in chapter 15 and verse 50, flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom. And then he said, I tell you a mystery, we're not all going to sleep. But if we're still alive, if we are, when Jesus returns, we'll be changed. Now, he already told us in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, the dead will rise. Those who have died will then come back to life. They will rise. And then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them. And then he explains when this happens. He says, it doesn't happen the day you die. He says it happens 
uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 and 52, it talks about the fact that the trumpet will sound at the last trumpet. It'll be the last trumpet. Now, Paul knew there was more than one trumpet. And you read Revelation beginning in chapter 8, and it talks about the seven trumpets that have to sound during the great and terrible day of the Lord. It's terrible for the world. It's not terrible for the Christian, but it is terrible for the, wor uh, for the world and those who have taken the mark of the beast and things like this at the time of the end. And so when that happens, there'll be seven trumpet judgments. Each trumpet represents a judgment. And at the last trumpet, Paul says, we will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and caught up to meet him. You ought to read that. It's in the Bible. Now, let me tell you about the conflict you're going to have. If you open up the Word of God to find out what it really says, you're going to get confused. Not that the Bible is confusing. No, no, the Bible's clear. The Bible's plain. The Bible's simple. Where you get confused is when you think about all those things you've heard at funerals. And I just went to one recently as I'm doing this program. In fact, just this week as I'm doing this program. Uh, you're going to get confused when you hear what they say, and then you open up the Bible and you read what God says, and God knows, and you're going to say, well, I'm so confused. Let me tell you something. I want to tell you something encouraging. A lot of you folks who have tried to read and understand the Bible, the reason you put it down, you said, I just can't make heads or, ta or, heads or tails. I just cannot understand the Bible. I am so confused. Let me tell you why you're confused. <laughs> You're trying to understand what happens to a person when they die based on what you've always heard and now based on what you're reading from the Bible. And guess what? The two contradict. And this is what I hear people say. Well, the Bible's loaded full of contradictions. Listen, dum-dum, it's not contradicting itself. The Bible does contradict what you've heard and what I've heard and, and the myths, traditions, the beliefs, the assumptions, the suppositions of mankind. What people think and what people preach and what people believe will contradict what the Bible says. It's not that the Bible contradicts itself. And the reason maybe you've had a hard time understanding the Bible when you tried to is because you were reading it through the filter of what you always heard. Well, I recommend you just lay aside everything you've ever heard, put it on the shelf, and just pick up the Bible and see what it says. Now, this article is not going to give you my opinion or the opinions of others. It's going to tell you what the Bible says. It's going to give you all these quotations. It will ask and answer the question, based on Scripture, is there an immortal soul? Nearly all religions believe in an immortal soul. Here's a subtitle, What the Bible Teaches. Here's another subtitle, The Bible Teaching on the Soul of Man. Uh, what is the Hebrew and the Greek words for soul? What does it mean? This, uh, here's one, What Happens After Death? Uh, like a cassette recorder. There's an analogy there. What, were the, what was the uh, apostles? What was their doctrine? And what about Lazarus and the rich man? So you'll get this information if you'll call me. It won't even cost you a stamp. There's no request for money. I'm not selling this. And I promise you, I'm not going to send you a bunch of appeal letters and try to get you to send us money. We have never done that in 35 years of radio broadcasting. It's totally, completely free. God has blessed us. We want to bless you. So here's the telephone number to call. It's 704. It's free. Just say, send me the article on what happens after death. Area code 704. The number is 938-6415. That's 938-6415. The area code is 704. And you just say, send me the article on what happens after death. One more time, I want to give you this telephone number. Remember, there's no follow-up. We're not trying to sell you something. We just want to make this available. And then you can share it with your pastor, share it with your friends and your family. Find out what the Bible actually says. 704-938-6415. Until next time, from Ambassador Christian College, this has been Dr. Keith Slough.